Hello guys, welcome back. So today's problem is from the topic of thermodynamics. So this problem does require a bit of careful analysis, but yeah, it's a very interesting problem. So let's read the problem. So basically we have two pipes whose cross-sectional areas are S and 2S, okay? And they're joined together and closed by two heat-resistant pistons that are connected by a spring with stiffness coefficient of K. So everything's uh, self-explanatory. So, so this piston has, has an area of S and this piston has an area of 2S. So they are heat-resistant, meaning heat cannot come in or go out and they're connected with a spring whose spring constant is given to be k. So now the thing is there is an ideal gas with a temperature of t between the pistons. The pipes are open to the atmosphere. So outside uh, we have atmospheric pressure and inside we have a have an ideal gas whose temperature is given to be t. In equilibrium the pistons are at the same distance from the joint. Okay so there is uh, an l missing from here. It should be so it should be at the same distance of l from the joint. So basically this distance is l and even this distance is l. Okay and at some point in time that gas temperature between the pistons is slowly being reduced to a temperature of t by 3. How much will the spring be compressed or stretched after this compared to the undeformed state? The atmospheric pressure is well known. You can take the atmospheric pressure as p naught. Okay. So you need to figure out the compression slash extension in the spring in terms of in terms of these these constants that are provided. Okay. So let's analyze this problem step by step. Okay, so first of all, the initial temperature is given to be T, okay, and uh, the initial volume is also something that we can determine. It is going, to, so this area of cross-section is S and this area of cross-section is 2S. So the part on the left, so this part on the left has a volume of L multiplied by S and this part has a volume of 2S multiplied by L. So overall, it has a volume of 3S multiplied by L. Okay, so now how do we determine the initial pressure? So for this, what I'm doing is I'm considering both the pistons and the spring as my system. Okay, so the gas is external to my system. As I'm taking the piston and the str and the spring as my system, I don't have to consider the spring forces in my FBD, right? Because they are internal forces. So what are the other forces? So there will be so there will be a force uh, applied by the gas on the left surface of the piston. So this is going to be P gas multiplied by 2S and similarly there will be a pressure of uh, P gas multiplied by S on the other piston and the outside and from the outside there is a force of P naught into S and similarly on the right piston there is going to be a force of P naught multiplied by 2S. Okay so these are the only external forces that are acting on my piston plus spring system. So there is only one way that uh, the system can be in equilibrium and that is if the uh, pressure of the gas inside is equal to the atmospheric pressure. So from here the initial pressure is actually P naught. Okay, so now what we're doing is we're slowly reducing the temperature of the ideal gas, right? So the ideal gas equation states that PV equals nRT, right? So if we are slowly reducing the temperature, PV has to reduce as well as it's an ideal gas. Okay, so, so we have to figure out what kind of a thermodynamic process is happening with the ideal gas. So and the answer to that kind of lies in this in the first line that we figured out. If you observe, it doesn't matter if even if the process is going on. So even as we are reducing the temperature of the ideal gas, we are doing it so slowly that the pistons at each stage are in equilibrium, right? meaning they are also in mechanical equilibrium. If I take both my pistons and my spring as the system once again, then the gas pressure actually always has to be equal to P naught, right? So P gas is actually a constant and it is equal to P naught. Okay, so the process actually is just isobaric. So the pressure of the ideal gas uh, within the container is actually constant and is equal to P naught. So we can consider this process as an isobaric process. So we have nailed out the possibility that P is going to change. So the only other possibility is that the volume is actually decreasing. So if we decrease the temperature by a factor, the volume also decreases by the same factor. Okay guys, so now let's draw the FBD of the right piston, right? So we have the force applied by the gas, which is P0 multiplied by 2S and the force of atmospheric pressure, which is also P0 multiplied by 2S and we have the spring force, right? F spring. So from this diagram, we can see that the spring force is actually just zero and uh, it's simply zero because the gas pressure is equal to the external pressure, right? So if the spring force is zero, what does that mean? That means that the spring doesn't compress or stretch. The distance, the piston to piston distance was 2L. So it is going to be maintained 2L. Now it's in the, in the question, we know that the volume of the ideal gas is going to decrease, right? So how is that possible if 2L is fixed? And the answer is there is only one possibility. The combined system has to move towards the left, okay? Because as we move towards the left, the volume, the net volume is going to decrease. Why is it decreasing? And that can be easily understood if we observe the change. So let's say this red line was the initial position 
of both the pistons, right? So as the pistons move towards the left, what happened was this volume got deleted and this volume got added. So obviously the volume that is being added is, is smaller in comparison to the volume that got deleted, which means obviously the volume is decreasing. So basically what will happen is, uh, initially they were symmetrically located at a distance of L from the joint. Now they are combinedly going to move towards the left. Okay, such that uh, the distance 2L is maintained. Okay, so now the thing is, there is an interesting point happening. At some point, the piston on the right will hit the wall, right? After that, it cannot move towards the left. So now the question is, does the system stop before hitting the edge or does it actually hit the edge? Okay, so that is pretty straightforward to determine if you... If you uh, if you just look at the equation of state, we know that the temperature is going to be become is going to become one third, right? So the final volume should also become one third. If there was no restrictions, then the final volume should actually become one third. So the final volume of the ideal gas should become one third the initial volume, which was three SL, right? So this final volume should actually become S into L. Now let's say this uh, piston actually hit this wall. Okay, now let's try to find out the volume of the gas. So this length is 2L and this uh, area of cross section is S. Volume of the ideal gas will be 2S into L in this case. Now, obviously, this is greater than my final volume, which means which means this piston actually hits the wall before reaching the final state. Okay, so uh, we can solve for this using the ideal gas equation. So at this instant, let's say the temperature is T dash. Okay, so we can easily determine T dash. So the this volume over here is 2SL, which is two thirds of my initial volume. Now, as volume is directly proportional to the temperature, right? It's directly varying with the temperature. The volume becomes two thirds when the temperature becomes two thirds. So at this instant, the temperature is two thirds the initial temperature T. Okay, we can write this as a note. So, so far, uh, from temperature of T to 2T by 3, the process was isobaric. And the piston on the right, uh, which I am naming it as R piston, is now restricted by the wall. Okay, so now the process is going to take a different turn. Uh, because now we have the external force applied by the wall on our piston, right? So, so far so good. So now we have to discuss about the process from 2T by 3 to our final temperature, which is actually T by 3. Okay, so now let's try to mark down the new forces that are acting on the system. So now the thing is, guys, uh, the piston on the right will hit the wall of the container, right? And it's going to feel some force N by the wall of the container, right? Uh, but from the outside, it's going to feel an force due to the atmospheric pressure of P0 into 2S. And similarly, the left piston will feel a force of P0 into S, right? And uh, from the inside, because of the gas pressure, it's going to feel a force of PG multiplied by S. And even this piston, if you observe, feels a force of PG into S because uh, only this uh, this part of the surface area is exposed to the gas, right? So now the thing is, guys, uh, once we reduce the temperature even more uh, by ideal gas equation, the pressure, the pressure inside or the pressure of the ideal gas will actually decrease. So till now, till the 2 T by 3 instant, we we noted that P gas was equal to P naught and therefore there Therefore, there was no compression taking place. But after this instant, if you observe, the P0 will be greater because Pg is going to decrease now, right? As the temperature is decreasing. So, so the pressure outside is greater, which means the piston is going to be compressed now, which means that the excess pressure will move the piston towards the right and the spring will now be compressed. Okay, so let's say the piston actually compresses the spring by some amount x. Okay, so the final length of the column is 2L minus X. So now we can apply the ideal gas equation. So we can say that PB over T uh, is a constant. So the initial pressure if was P0, initial volume. So the volume in this state was 2SL divided by the temperature was 2T by 3. So equals the final pressure, final gas pressure multiplied by the final volume, which is 2L minus X multiplied by S. So as the column of the gas now occupies a length of 2L minus X and the area of cross section is S, its final volume is going to be 2L minus X times S divided by the final temperature, which is T over three, right? Okay, so after, you know, canceling out a few terms, we get P naught multiplied by L equals PF multiplied by 2L minus X. So we, so we basically need one more equation so that we can figure out by balancing the FBD of the left piston. So we are taking the left piston specifically because the right one is involved with the wall, right? So we don't want to include the forces on the wall. So, okay, so the piston is going to feel a force of P naught S and from inside, it's going to, um, because of the gas pressure, it'll feel a force of P S multiplied by S. And as it has compressed the spring by, by an amount of X, it will feel a force of K multiplied by 
x. So from here we get pf equals p0 minus kx over s. Okay. So now we can just substitute it for, uh, into the above equation. So it'll be p0 times l. Okay. So now basically everything is in terms of known variables, right? except s and it's a quadratic in x so we can solve this quadratic for its roots okay so once we solve for the value of x okay we get these two solutions so in this you have to we'll just have to analyze this a bit so if you divide this 2k to this term uh, it turns out to be l right and if you send this 2k inside the square root it'll become 4k squared right so this thing is going to be l squared so which means the square root will give us an answer greater than l right so this is for sure so basically if i choose the positive root i'm actually getting an answer that is greater than 2l now that is not possible because the spring length initially itself the spring length was equal to 2l so we cannot get an answer greater than 2l that's physically meaningless right so we'll choose a negative root here x turns out to be p naught s looking at the solution we can see that this term is actually greater than this term right so which means the x that we have solved for is actually positive so we assumed that the piston actually got compressed by an amount of x and we got a positive solution for x which means our assumption was correct and this is actually the final state in which the spring gets compressed by an amount of x so now in the question they wanted us to find the final compression of the spring which is going to be this particular value okay so so yeah that's about it for uh, this question guys if you have any doubts you can comment down below and that's it thanks for watching